Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Black Heart Assign, I'm black in again asking you to hit that share button. Uh, thanks to anyone who was hit to share or like or subscribe. Um, hitting share, of course, is important because that benefits us and the message is more important than the messenger. Now, I have at least twice, maybe three times, previously recorded um, and uploaded videos telling black folks that we're not the worst in the world and we need to stop acting like we are and assuming we are and talking as though we are. I recorded and uploaded one yesterday and it got flagged. Now I know that something, uh, now I understand. Now, whoever it was that referred this or reported this to YouTube, um, may Allah curse you. Um, because what I said was true. It was not flattering, but it was true and it needed to be said. One of the reasons that I will stand by me saying that is because, number one, I told you who is not the uh, who who does not fall under this umbrella. It is not the Arabs overall, although there is something for which they're guilty. And uh, I even said that even among the better ones that I singled out, there is a tribe called the Rawali that do not do the same things. It's just like when a lot of us, when we start talking about, I'm talking about when, me, when many of us African-American Muslims start talking about the ancient Arabs, we'll sit up there and we will point out how they used to bury their baby girls alive. Well, it's true that there were people that did it, but a lot of us tend to forget there were tribes that did not do this. Omar's tribe was one of those that did not bury baby girls alive. There were some people who would sit out there at the um, at the sites for this and they would wait for a family to show up and they would say, look, before you bury this girl, we'll take her, we'll raise her. It won't be your responsibility anymore. And they would do this. There was one man that did this. He raised these girls and then he would find good husbands for them and marry them off. So I did not at any point say uh, something that you can consider to be racist, but I'm going to talk about cultures where they are foul. And because the better ones tend to be the ones who preach Islam the most and to who seem uh, they hold themselves up as being uh, scions of conservatism in Islam, I'm going to tell you where they screwed up and where they failed in what they said about themselves. Now they don't tell you they're perfect and nobody blames them for acting like they're perfect per se. But they're not very good at saying, okay, now we screwed this up, we were wrong for that. That is where they need some help. You messed this up. You need to, you know, that's what we need to be able to sit up and say to them, hold up, now, okay, slow your roll. You didn't say you're perfect, but you have, uh, you have not said that you screwed up. You have not said that the better do this, that, and the other. Unless, of course, they're talking to you in private one-on-one. -on -one. Let me go ahead and get to the main point of why I recorded this, though. I said yesterday that uh, you have every right to want to see proof of what my claim was, that we're not the worst people in the world, or some evidence, or at least know what evidence I saw, even though I can't copy it in front of you, and that is this, the evidence that I saw of uh, what I said was that number one, the Bedu, um, outside of, of course, the, the Rawali tribe that I mentioned, that are generally speaking good as gold. Um, when they practice Bedouia, that means that they do not uh, favor education. They don't promote education. They don't see education as something that is good and wholesome. Uh, they see education as something that just kind of gets in the way and ruins things for them. The requirements and the work requirements of education, they feel the same way about it. They do not want you sitting up here and telling them that they need to study, that they need to listen, that they need to think, that they need to practice and make mistakes and let you correct them and then repeat the corrections two or three times. Now, when they don't practice better, we are then, well, they're not the problem. But of course, other better ones look at them like they're strange. They're considered weird for studying. I kid you not. So their orientation is all around getting rewards and not doing the work for the rewards. Their whole orientation as a society is that. It is to the point that we have a serious cheating problem in the Gulf. I mentioned how 
Uh, in my university, we not only had to ban cell phones in students' possessions uh, inside of the building during testing times, but how we also have to sweep the building the night before, or someone has to go in the night before and check hiding places to make sure that people did not buy an extra cell phone because they're not going to go a whole night without the cell phone. Buy an extra cell phone, tape it into some hiding place so that they could use it the next day to cheat on the phone, cheat on the exams, because they can't walk into buildings past the metal detectors with them. I caught a student. Uh, he, had it, he had his cell phone hidden in his notebook. I was like, no, uh-uh, this ain't going to work. I caught him with it. Of course, I called him some nasty names, and then I took him over to the security guard. We got students who, now mind you, you have to bring your ID and you're not allowed to bring your cell phone as a student. We have students who do exactly the opposite. They come with the cell phone, oh, I forgot. Well, where's your ID? Yeah, well, see, I don't have it. Oh. So then what they'll say is, but I have a picture of it in my phone. No, uh, -uh. you don't come in here with the opposite of what we said. You're trying to get your phone inside of the place. You need to bring your ID with you and not your phone. You did the opposite. Well, I forgot my ID. I don't care. Leave come back with it. Oh, I live in a village 200 kilometers away. Um, so I guess you just missed this test then, dummy. Maybe you can take the retake. You knew what you were doing. They do anything except study for the test and come in and take the test and write the answers correctly and learn the material and graduate with the knowledge of what they studied in their minds and be ready for the job. I had a Kareem driver one day, um, took me to work when I missed the bus. And uh, his first job was working at the hospital. And he said to me, the students are coming out of your program and they don't know anything. They can't write their names in English. They can't write the reports and they're giving, in giving injections in the wrong locations to some of these patients. Now this is major. So I went and I told the students, this is what's being said about you uh, or about those who have preceded you. Not you, you're still in the program, but about those who have come years ahead of you. This is what is being said about them. Understand, I'm telling you now, I'm not blaming you for what the previous students did. I'm simply telling you to take your work seriously so that over time this will not be a problem anymore and your generation will not be blamed. Now this is what I was supposed to tell them. They started trying to argue and interrupt and deflect, and I said, I'd slow your roll. I didn't even blame you guys. You just got here. I'm simply telling you what your forebears have been accused of so that you don't do it. That's all. Well, how do you know? Well, this is how we will know before you start interrupting me. We will know if you study this seriously and you take it serious. If you were just as good as the guys who, if you start off your job just as well as the guys who preceded you, then that means that it was nothing different. If you actually studied, then that means they studied too. But if you study seriously, you come out with the knowledge that you need to start off your job and you start off better than what they did, that means you studied and they did not study. That's how we'll know. All you got to do is not fall victim to the same mistake. All I simply did was say, okay, there's a pothole up ahead of you. Avoid that pothole and you won't damage your tires. And you want to sit up and debate with me about it? That means you wanted to drive your tire over the pothole. That's what that means. And these niggas started, um, and my co-teacher is like me. So now the students understand they don't have um, a soft angle to take. So what they're going to have to do now is study or they're gonna fail because we're gonna catch them cheating. And so a student came to me, one of the uh, fluent students came to me yesterday morning and he said to me, Blackheart, I'm letting you know now, I just wanna tell you because I know you don't mean any harm. So I'm, I'm dropping the dime on my classmates because you're not trying to hurt, hurt us or harm us and, and I know this. They want uh, to get an A and not do the work. And they have decided that they're, that they're already talked about this. They're going to look for you to make any mistake. And they're going to look for your co-teacher to make any mistake. Because they're trying to get rid of you. And they know that you don't deserve this. I said, okay. Now I see what's going on. So, um, thanks for letting me know, man. When we go back in the classroom, I'm going to act like... Uh, I'm going to act like you asked me a dumb question about a completely different topic. 
And so I went in and I made it look like we were talking about something else to cover for the kid. Why am I telling you this, black folks? I'm telling you this because this is something that you have heard. You have seen this type of behavior yourselves in middle school and high school among our people. That makes it sound the same, right? No, here's how I know that you're actually better than many other people that have been through the same thing you've been through. Number one, what I just told you is university. This is not middle school or high school. This is happening among the university students. That's the first thing. That's the bombshell right there. Secondly, these are kids who will pray five times a day. But you know what they do? They try to use the prayer as an excuse to not be in class on time after the break, to come back late from the break. Oh, I was praying, doctor. Yeah, you had a 10 minute break and it takes about six minutes to pray. So um, don't tell me that. You just, you're, you're absent, that's it. You missed this hour. That's what we're dealing with. These are 18 to 19 year olds who will sit up here and try to use the religion as an excuse to not do their jobs. Now, have we not heard, is this not one of the things that many of the women say about black men, especially religious black men who aren't rich? Well, he using the religion as an excuse to not do anything. Okay, all right, now you have that here. And these are 18 and 19 year olds cheating and then even when they get caught cheating sometimes um, they say well it's not cheating it's just help and they may try to defend those who don't cheat feel bad and they try to defend the ones who do cheat because they feel like they're, uh, they've already betrayed their people enough by not cheating so they might as well defend the guilty well doctor he doesn't understand any English yeah well what the hell is he doing in an advanced class if he doesn't he could have signed up for a lower level class and who's fault, who the hell's fault is it if he doesn't understand anything and he's already taken English classes for seven years? That sense of accountability is gone. But you think, and you've been saying, and you keep on writing comments, not necessarily on my post, but on other people's uh, social media pages, YouTube, Facebook, uh, you, you have been sitting up here, men and women alike, talking as though everybody else is more together than you. No, when you get your passport, you go abroad and you begin to see this kind of dysfunction up close coming from other people and they're not black. Of any nationality, they're not black. Now I've set up here and given you details of what I observe so that you can understand it. If you get a passport and you go elsewhere, you're going to see people that are as good as gold and you're going to see people that are just they're even more trifling than you. And here's a second bombshell. You and I had to be drug away from home. The homeland had to be colonized. We had to be traumatized away from home. All of this had to happen for the black race globally to be in the position in which we find it now. These people here were not colonized. I'm not saying the Middle East was not, but in these Bedouin areas uh, that I'm working in now, they were not colonized. The colonization happened in major cities. These people are worse than the ones who come from the cities that were actually under colonial rule. These people are coming out of villages and towns and in the middle of nowhere that was not under colonial rule. They were completely independent and they are the worst. And if you don't believe me, Read chapter 9 of the Quran, verse 97, 98, 99. 99 talks about the minority that's good. 97, 98 are warnings from God to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be to him, about specifically the Bedouin. I'm telling you about the Bedouins because I live among them. I can talk about them because I know them. They're not the only group of people you're going to see this in. If you pay attention, if you travel and you pay attention, you'll find this out. And as a matter of fact, if you start befriending some people of other backgrounds where you live as a, as a type of spy, you will find this out. You will see. Yeah. <laughs> you know, let, let that young Korean confide in you about what his people are like. You're going to find out. You're going to find out that actually black folks, globally speaking, are the ones that are the most against any kind of incest. Bet y'all didn't know that, huh? Yeah, we're the most against it. But they don't tell you that. You gonna find out that, um, well, you know what? If you can't get the passport and if you can't get the friends and you'll see what I'm saying. I gave you evidence of my situation. And one of the things that can, that one of the ways you can know is that see all my videos now have been getting over 100 views within the last four weeks. I put this video up and it got 30 views. 
and I got the email. Oh, we got you. You've been flagged, and it's age restricted now. It was my subscribers looking at it anyway, but what I'm seeing now is that it was age restricted because of what foul language. Now I'm putting this message up again, and you're probably gonna see the same thing happen again. Without me swearing, you're gonna see the exact same thing. The original N word was not us. We're just the ones that called ourselves that. These cats here were the original N word. And some say, well, well, if they're so bad, why would you follow the prophet? Well, they will tell you themselves that this religion is not only for them. It's not only an Arab religion. This is where we will agree. And so when they act like they have a special place in it, that's when I always remind them, oh, no, no, this is not only your religion, is it? One student today came up, he tried to tell me, uh, I'm going to do my presentation on Ramadan. And I said, man, I already told you, you can't do it on anything uh, that, that goes on here in the peninsula. Yeah, but Dr. Ramadan's for all the Muslims, it's not just for the peninsula. I said, okay, I'll tell you what, do it for a country that does not speak Arabic. No, doctor. I already chose Egypt. I said, uh-uh, uh-uh. So we got a problem here already. You're lazy. I want you to do it on a non-Arabic speaking country. End of story. <laughs> a country where Arabic is not their language. And you can't pick Pakistan either. All right. I think I've said enough. Thank you for being patient. Um... Hopefully what I've said will not be true one day in the future, but in the meantime, I hope that what I've said is a benefit. Blackheart, signing black out. Assalamu alaikum. And uh, in case any white supremacists are listening, to hell with you, white America. Black power.